Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be filming a completely new type of video, at least for me, not for anybody else, because I know these videos have existed all over YouTube in the beauty community for many, many years. We are about halfway through the year now, and I thought that it would be really fun to film an empties video of all of the products that I have used up uh, during the first half of the year. I have honestly been saving a ton of these for a while, and I'm really looking forward to recycling like all of these empty products, all of these empty tubes and everything like that. But first I wanna tell you guys what are the products that I actually went so far as to use up entirely, how I felt about them, what are my thoughts, opinions on how they wore, and would I repurchase them? I was originally going to do this kind of at the end of the year, but I felt like that was too far away and that I might not remember some of these products, so we're just gonna do it now. I've got a bunch of like makeup and then also some skincare and bath care, so let's get started right away. The first thing that I used up is this MAC brush cleanser. This is not the first bottle of this that I have had, and it is not the last one that I will have. Now, while I do really, really enjoy solid brush cleaners, I think that they're fantastic, this is really good as well. I find that all you have to do with this is kind of wet your brush, put a little bit of this on it and run it back and forth on a paper towel and it takes all of the makeup off. It doesn't, you know, give your brushes a strange texture. At one point I actually wasn't even rinsing this off my brushes because I just didn't realize you had to. I thought you could just put them in this and it was fine. We're talking many, many, many years ago. Uh, but now I do know you have to rinse it off, but it keeps your brushes really, really in good shape. It is MAC, so it is very good with their brushes. And all you have to do is reform them and shape them afterwards and it works really, really well. Whereas sometimes I find that the solid beauty blender, like I have the beauty blender solid cleaner, um, solid brush cleansers, sometimes can get stuck in the bristles depending on how dense the brush is and it can be really hard to work out but because this is a pure liquid it's normally pink it is a little bit easier to work with so I really really like that. Next thing and this is something that I talked about a ton was something I got in a boxy charm. This is the First Aid Beauty KP Bump Eraser Body Scrub. I loved this stuff. I definitely would not recommend it well, it says not for facial use. It is super, super abrasive. And I've always had these like little bumpies all on my arms. I'm not too sure what that is or what it's from, but I found that it did a really, really good job of getting rid of some of them. It was fantastic. It is super, super, super exfoliating, but also really good on sensitive skin. So it was kind of interesting because I find that a lot of very, very abrasive scrubs can cause redness and irritation in the skin. And this just didn't do that. I would definitely repurchase this again. I am holding off right now because I do have a couple other ones that I'm trying to use up and I'm trying to be more thoughtful with some of my purchases and making sure like use up what you've got first, then you can start replenishing stuff either with stuff you've already tried or new things. So definitely will repurchase this. Highly, highly recommend to anybody who is looking for some kind of a body scrub. It is really, really, really good. Next thing that I also really, really liked is this Glam Glow Gentle Bubble Daily Conditioning Cleanser. This I also received, I believe, in a BoxyCharm. While it stinks, like it smells really bad and I don't know what that is, it was super gentle, uh, really, really good at removing makeup, dirts, oils, everything like that, and very, very safe for sensitive skin. I loved this. I used to use it in the shower. It is fantastic. Would I repurchase this? I'm going to be honest, probably not. It was quite expensive and I have another like cleanser that does a similar thing. It is the Cetaphil cleanser uh, and it comes in a bigger bottle with a pump. I do prefer that one, but if you are looking for something and you're familiar with Glam Glow, definitely check this out. It is really, really good. Next thing that I was finally able to use up, this is my MAC strobe cream. This particular one is in the shade Peach Light. I have also had Pink Light, which is the original MAC strobe cream, and also I still have a silver light that I'm in the process of using up right now. The Peach Light is by far my favorite, followed closely behind by the Pink Light, but what I really like about MAC strobe creams is they put out, ooh, I would say probably five or six years ago, a whole bunch of new colors. So they have a red light, yellow light, and then the peach, the pink, and the silver light. So I find that depending on where your natural, uh, undertone is if you've got a more pink one or a more peach one maybe you have a red undertone a yellow undertone 
depending on what your undertone is, you could find one of these that would work really, really well for your skin tone. They are absolutely beautiful. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous moisturizer. They feel really nice on the skin. They just give you that little kiss without it being too, too much glow. Uh, and a really, really good product if you're having like a no makeup day or you only have time to throw on one thing. This is a really, really good product to have. It is a little pricey, but a little bit goes a long way. I've had three or four of these and they always last a really long time, even when I'm using them every day, as I have been with the silver light lately because I am trying to use it up because I would like to go back to the peach light, but I can't justify buying it until I use up the silver light. So definitely would repurchase this. And while the peach light might not be the color for everybody, uh, there are other options that you could check out that all work just as well. Next product is the Becca First Light Priming Filter. I have already replaced this with a full size version. I just love this primer. I'm so bummed that Becca is whatever shutting down, going out of business, whatever, but you can still get this on Sephora right now. Um, so check that out if you want. This particular primer is super good, especially if you have drier skin and you like a little bit of glow. It's not too much glow in the same sense as like the backlight priming filter or even the Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow. It's not even as reflective as the strobe cream, but there is like a little, little like micro fine something in here, like just, just a little bit. And it is super, super thin, very, very hydrating, very moisturizing and works with every foundation. Like not that I've tried every foundation in the world, but all of the ones I have tried, I always feel quite confident, quite comfortable that I can try them with this and they're going to work perfectly fine. Definitely get this if you get the chance. I hoped that the e.l.f. purple primer would be similar to this. It was not. It had more of a, um, like, silicone-y effect to it. Um, this one's the one to get. Really, really good. Next thing we're going to talk quickly about, I have a Marc Jacobs, what is this called? Invisible Undercover Perfecting Coconut Face Primer, and I have the uh, Do You Do Drops Coconut Gel Highlighter. These I have replaced. I am obsessed with these. Again, Marc Jacobs Beauty is going out of business. Um, if you guys get the chance to get these, cannot recommend it enough. I personally like the original ones the best, but they also have them in rose gold and in a deeper shade. So if you have a deeper skin tone and you're looking for something a little bit more bronzy, they do have something like that as well. They are very, very expensive, but they are so worth it in my opinion. This I would say is like a three in one kind of a product. I have mixed it with foundations. It never does anything weird with my foundations. Just gives them this beautiful, beautiful glow. You can wear it as a standalone highlighter, but it is extremely, extremely intense. Or if like the strobe cream, you're just looking for something on your natural skin, you could just put this on all over your face, wear it kind of like a primer if you really, really wanted to. But again, very, very intense glow. I'm obsessed with this. I love the consistency of it. It blends so, so well. It kind of does get chunky in the nozzle from time to time, but once you get the first pump out, uh, it's normally okay. Love this. Back to the primer. This is just a regular primer. It, personally, I find that coconut smells go one of two ways. They either smell really refreshing and nice or almost like sour and this is definitely one of the sour ones and it always kind of has been so it was really difficult to tell when it finally went off but it was a really really beautiful beautiful primer super hydrating super moisturizing much like the becca one laid really really nicely under foundations i never seemed to have a problem with it it was mostly just the smell i couldn't get over so while i would highly recommend the dew drops and i would definitely repurchase them and i may have to before they completely disappear on me. I would not rebuy uh, the primer. It just, I've had better primers that are much less expensive. That's all I have to say about that. I've got a couple more primers that we might as well talk about right now. One being the Natasha Denona uh, Face Glow Primer. I bought this years and years and years ago when I did my, like, not a full face of Natasha Denona, but I tested out uh, I followed, what is the word I'm looking for? I followed a tutorial that they posted. If I can find that video, it's from so, so long ago. I will link it up here. It's from when I used to live at my parents' house. It was literally one of the first videos I ever did. 
This primer, so expensive, like ridiculously so, but so unique as a primer. It is hydrating, it has this interesting glow to it, but it's the weirdest texture. It's almost like a, I, I don't think I'll be able to like show you anymore. It feels like a coconut oil primer, like before, do you know how coconut oil solidifies and you really, really have to work it with your hands and warm it to get it to work? Similar to that, kind of a, a thicker consistency. So when you first scrape some out, you're like, oh, this is really think, th think, thick and putty like, but all you have to really do is just work it in with your fingertips and then rub it into your face. And it's really, really nice. And because it's that thicker consistency, it also has the added benefit that I found that it kind of acted a little bit as a blurring and pore filler while also giving you hydration and a bit of glow. It was kind of like that all in one primer. You don't get a lot of it and it is really expensive, but if you're looking for a primer like that and it sounds interesting to you, then by all means, pick it up, maybe wait for a sale, but it is really nice. Next one I have is the Maybelline Master Prime. This is the Blur and Smooth. I don't even know if they make this anymore. I don't know if it comes in this packaging anymore. What I will tell you about this is this is not the right primer for me personally. I have very, very dry skin. I tend not to really like the way that blurring primers look on me. Um, I find that they make my skin texture a lot more visible and apparent under makeup. And I found that this was no exception. I also find that this one in particular gave like kind of a white cast. Oh, there's still some in here. Uh, on my face when it blurred. I know that these are super, super popular and they're super affordable, but for me, this just wasn't the right one. Now, if you're looking for a blurring and a smoothing thing, this might be the one for you if they still make it. The one thing I will say is they mean it when they say 12 months because I did find that afterwards it started pilling up on me. And a lot of times I can get away with having makeup products longer than their recommended usage. Now I only use them on myself. I don't do makeup on other people very often. And when I do, I either use their makeup or I use makeup that I know is newer to me. I would never put an expired product on somebody else's face, but on my face, I don't mind. But this one acted up on me a ton. I don't have a problem with the Maybelline Master Prime. It's just this particular one that isn't good for me. I think I need a more hydrating one. Speaking of hydration, I feel like I've had this for so, so long. This is the First Aid Beauty Coconut Water Cream Hydrate Smooths Recharge. I loved this. It was like I cleaned it out. I have never ever cleaned out a product like I cleaned out this and I was working on it for a really 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 long time because a little bit goes a really long way. If you like water creams this is one of those coconut ones that actually smells like sweet coconut not like sour coconut so that was really nice and that's because it's more coconut water than coconut itself but this was fantastic. Really good for sensitive skin, never gave me breakouts, felt really good on like sunburns and stuff as well which was kind of interesting. I loved this. I would totally repurchase this again. I do have a ton of other moisturizers that I'm into right now, which is why I probably won't. But if I were ever looking for another water bomb, this is the one that I would recommend. I've tried a ton of water creams before. The Saturday Skin Glacier Cream. I think I tried a Belief Water Bomb once. This one is the best one and it's pretty affordable. So definitely check this out if you're in the market for one. Okay, I feel like we're almost through everything. I've just got like a handful of other products to talk about. Let's quickly talk about a setting spray. I was finally able to use up one of my Urban Decay All Nighter setting sprays. This was a mini one, like a deluxe sample size that I got. I used to like these little ones for travel. I do really like the All Nighter setting spray. It is really good. It really does last all night. It is definitely one of the ones I would recommend. It has a really good mist. Oh, there was still stuff in there. It has a really, oh, look at that has a really good mist pattern on it. One thing I will say, it does smell slightly alcoholy. I don't know that there is alcohol in here, um, but it does kind of give across that smell. Whereas I find that some other ones, you know, the MAC Preppin Primes, the Glam Glow Glow Setter one, they don't carry that scent to them, but things like the All Nighter one and even the L'Oreal Infallible one kind of have a little bit of like an alcohol scent to them. Not a big deal, just something to be of note, but it is really, really good. Um, they make a couple setting sprays. They have a dewy one, a matte one. They have the original one. Definitely go with the original. Super long lasting, really, really good. And, huh, 
temperature control technology. I don't know anything about that, but whatever. Next, we're gonna get into one of my longtime favorite products. This is my MAC Prep and Prime Lip. This is like a lip balm that is moisturizing, hydrating, and also prevents feathering. So anytime I'm doing like a bright lip or a dark lip or something bold where I'm a little bit concerned, I like to put this on first. Mainly A, I have super, super dry lips. They chap like crazy. They're always cracking. So I find that this does help kind of even that out, smooth it out a little bit before applying a lipstick, especially if it's like a matte lipstick where they kind of tend to sink into those cracks and show any of your problems. Um, but the other thing I really like about this, like I said, is it does prevent feathering around your lips. Now, I know that there's other brands that make similar products to this. I know that there was a drugstore, like, lip pencil that was supposed to do this. It was, like, a clear lip pencil that said it wouldn't feather. I've never tried it, so I don't know, but I highly, highly recommend this. I still have one now that I'm using. I This is a product that I will always, always, always replenish because it is the only one like it that I've ever tried and really, really loved. It's got no scent to it. It's not super thick. At the same time, it's not super slick at all either, so it doesn't, like, your lipstick doesn't slip around on top of it. Really, really good product. Definitely, definitely aids for long wearing lipstick. Next product, another from MAC. This is MAC Black Track. This particular one is super duper dried out and you can see has cracked on me. It is real old. Again, I already have another one of these. Uh, this is my go-to gel liner. It is so black and so long wearing. And depending on the brush that you use, I find that this is easier to control going on than some felt liners. I also have a felt liner that we're gonna talk about in a minute. But for whatever reason, I always come back to this. While I find the felt liners are easier for convenience and speed because it's an all-in-one tool, if I'm really concerned about getting a nice, thin, thin, thin line that I don't want fussing with, I will always go for MAC Black Track. Again, I have tried other brands. I've had Maybelline ones like this. I think I've had a NYX one. Um, I might have had some Tarte ones for sure. Um, this one is the best by far. It stays super smooth, super creamy. This one is cracked, but that's because I've had it for a very long time. The lids can be tightened really tightly. They like to, they, they stay hydrated for a very, very, very long time highly highly recommend so especially if you want to try a more fluid line eyeliner and for me the ones with the sponge tips those don't work for me if you struggle to do the felt liners maybe try this out you might find that you have a little bit more control with a brush Speaking of felt liners, I have the Urban Decay Perversion Waterproof Fine Point Pen. This is a net I can see there's just a huge like hair hanging off it. Not that it matters. This one is all dried out on me, but the tip has stayed basically perfect since I got it. It does create a very, very black line. It's not the blackest of the um, felt liners that I've ever had. I find that the MAC Rapid Black one and the Stila Stay All Day liner are two of my darker ones that I've really enjoyed and they have a really nice fine tip. Um, but this one was really good. Now keep in mind this one is waterproof. Not all of them are. So if you want a waterproof one or don't, you know, it is important to kind of pay attention to that. Not that waterproof's not great on some occasions, but to be honest, I find it so much more difficult to remove. So if I'm not planning on like crying or getting wet or something like that, I'll always go for a non-waterproof one. Same can be said about mascaras. I think I already have repurchased this when I did my full face of Urban Decay makeup, but then I think I also gave it away. There was just something about this, the flexibility and the tip that made it very, very difficult to create a nice, even, thin line. I would find it would always get thick on me on one eye or the other and it was more of like a hassle to try and get a smooth line. So not my favorite felt tip liner. There are definitely better ones out there. We'll probably not repurchase that one. I've got a NYX Doll Eye Volume Mascara in Extreme Jet Black. Now something I found out about this afterwards is that this is actually a tubing mascara, supposedly, which means that unlike normal mascaras like the one I'm wearing today where it just puts a coat of it on your lashes, I also found that I'm sitting really far back here, I apologize, um, where it puts a really nice like flaky coat on your lashes, these ones actually film 
not film, form a tube around your lash, surrounding it. It's a polymer consistency. It stays on better. It doesn't flake off. They are waterproof. They are really, really cool. And they feel kind of rubbery when you touch them, which is really, really interesting. Um, this one actually like dried out on me super, super quickly. I'm not sure if I just didn't close it properly. The brush was okay, nothing particularly special. Um, for these kind of mascaras, I do prefer to have a rubberized brush uh, with a little bit like more comb, if that makes sense to you. Like a little bit more of like a comb because I find it separates because the problem with the polymers is that if your eyes are clumped together, they're going to form one big tube around them. It's So it is important to really separate your lashes first. Not my favorite tubing mascara. I've got a like dragon lash mascara that I love and I'm really interested. I know MAC has a tubing mascara that I really want to try out, but I would not repurchase this one. Something I would repurchase, this is my MAC brow set. Now I know what you're thinking. It used to be clear. Um, the colorant is just from, you know, brushing it on while I already had my eyebrows done. I don't always use brow set to be honest. Most of the time my brush, my brushes, my brows brush down pretty easily and I don't find that I have to. Um, but every once in a while I get little strays and they cause problems. The other thing I actually like to use this for is for little flyaway hair. So if I pull all of my hair back into some kind of a thing and I find that I'm getting a lot of these little baby hair flyaways, you can actually brush them down with a clear brow set and they'll stay down. I really like this one. I find that it really keeps your brows in place. It's got a nice sized brush here, which I really, really like. And it doesn't make them feel sticky or hard at all. It just literally keeps them where you want them. It's a really, really good one. I'm pretty sure I already have another one in my drawers. Um, Again, I don't use it all the time, but when I go for one, this one's my favorite. I've tried a couple other ones that have come in different boxy charms, and nothing has ever surpassed this one. Okay, we only have three more products left. First one is this Mini Benefit Cabral product. I got this in a boxy charm a long time ago. Mine is in shade two. I have since repurchased this in a different shade. Um, I do really like this product. I'm gonna be honest, the brow pomades and the brow powders are not my favorite. I much prefer a pencil, particularly like the micro fine pencils. I just think that they're easier to get little hair like um, strokes out of. These are really good if you have a lot of brow to fill in because it is a lot quicker and because it is a powder and it just kind of blends in. It sort of depends on the look you're going for. If you want a thicker, kind of like more dramatic drawn on eyebrow, then a product like this is probably a good one. But if you're looking for a more natural kind of fluffy hair like structure to your brows, I would steer away from these and go towards more of a pencil, um, whether it be a felt tip pencil or like a retractable pencil. I just think that there are better options. So while I do have a new one of this, I don't use it very often and I am actually considering getting rid of it. One that I do really like, and I literally use this one up today. Like this is the last day I have it. I'm gonna need to buy a new one because I love this. This is the Hourglass Arch Brow Micro Sculpting Pencil. It has the teeniest, tiniest little tip to it. I don't even know if you guys can see it. And it's kind of in an oval shape, which is very interesting. A lot of them are just circular or whatever. So it made it really easy to draw on little fine hairs. On the other end, you get a little spoolie spoolie brush. Always important, I love that. My particular one was in the shade Blonde and it worked perfectly for me. I find that a lot of like blonde ones can pull kind of red on me. Not this one. This one was amazing. I love it so, so much. Was really quick, really easy. Didn't tug at all. Really, really nice pigmentation. Um, just fantastic. Really pricey, I will say that. I think I got mine in a boxy charm, which kind of sucks because I do love it so much that I do want to buy it again. But what can you do? When you love something, you love something. Last product, another one I used up last week is my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I am in the shade Light 2 Vanilla. Look at that. Completely empty. I've already started my new one because I did purchase a new one during the last VIB Rouge sale, I believe, or another sale because I knew I would need it. This is my favorite, favorite, all-time favorite, best concealer ever. It is so full coverage. It is so fantastic 
And for me, I'll be honest, I kind of put this on as a layer before I add a liquid concealer or a cream concealer. I do like double coverage um, and I like to use uh, liquid concealers for spot concealing, but this one is just so, so good for really canceling out those like dark circles I find. Another thing I use it for is when I do put eyeshadow on and I get a little bit out of my line, if I take a little bit of this on a beauty blender and just kind of dot it on, it'll like make that seamless and invisible. I just love this so, so much. I heard about it on Shan XO's channel. She's used it for forever. I love this. Go get this if you've never tried it. That is all of my empties so far for 2021. I have never done a video like this, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was okay. Have you guys tried any of these products out? Let me know in the comments down below. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video, and if you're not and you would like to be, subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. I will catch you guys next time. Bye.